Hello everyone, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Now, it's been a while since I played or did any coverage of this game, and you might be wondering why, since I did say I would. Well, the reason is, when the game got updated to the Beta 2, my copy somehow got corrupted, and so I wasn't able to access the game at all. Uh, even trying a full uninstall and re-download didn't fix the issue, so I decided to just wait until the Beta 3 came along and basically just hope that it would fix itself, because I was really unable to do anything about it. But thankfully, it did fix itself. But before I could really do any coverage of it, I ended up going to PAX Australia, which is why this and some other videos uh, ended up being made a bit late, as I wasn't home. But once I did get home, I spent the next few days getting a decent grasp on all the changes. But I haven't played since the beta 1, and there have been a lot of changes since then. So if I end up making some mistakes, that is why. But anyway, let's take a look at Elite Dangerous Beta 3. So the biggest and probably most notable difference in the Beta 3 has to be the size of the accessible game area. As you can see here, the number of star systems that you can explore have gone from around 550 in the Beta 2 to over 2400 in the Beta 3. Now that's a lot of space to explore, and even after playing for several days I haven't seen more than a tiny fraction of it. Um, now, as the galaxy map shows, it is a still a long way from the 400 billion star systems they are aiming for, but the number of available systems are coming far faster than I thought they would, so thumbs up to Frontier Developments in that regard. They are making a lot of effort to get all the game world open and available to us as soon as possible. Also, the inherent boredom that comes with this vast emptiness space has been somewhat addressed in this beta stage and been made more interesting uh, with the induction of two new core mechanics. So the first one is something I've been looking forward to for a while and that is player driven introductions. What this means is that you can now pull a other player or NPC out of Super Cruise and choose what you end up doing with them, which most of the time is likely going to be scanning them to see if they have any valuable cargo or a bounty, and then trying to take them out and cash in before they either take you out or escape. Now, I really like the implementation of this mechanic because it can happen almost anywhere. For example, you could be flying through a remote system and beforehand you could just point your ship at your target destination and let's say go get a drink while your ship cruises along. Now however you could come back to no ship at all because you got interdicted and blown up. So it keeps you more engaged in the game which is good as I myself felt a little disconnected when I was traveling long distances as rarely anything would happen. Also, the act of interdicting itself is a skill-based mechanic. Let me show you what I mean. So here I'm interdicting a NPC, and you can also see that I'm trying to keep their ship in my sights. And the longer I can keep them targeted like this, the closer I get to catching them and pulling them out of Super Cruise. But the reverse is also true for the ship trying to escape me, as they need to keep targeting a blue circle that will appear for them, which is their escape vector. Now if I win, like I said, I pull them out of Super Cruise, but if they win, they break the interdiction and get away. So it's a system that rewards good piloting skills, which I definitely approve of. But and on top of that, it also looks like you'll be able to purchase different interdiction equipment um, which I'm assuming will make it either easier or faster to perform an interdiction. So it's a system that should end up being relatively fair on everyone as it's got both parts of skill and in-game equipment. So overall I feel this addition has been done really well and pretty much exactly how I was hoping it would be. Then we have the second new mechanic, which is the introduction of mining into the game. So to do mining, you'll need to go out and buy some mining equipment, mainly a mining laser and a refinery. You can then head to the new asteroid belts, 
or asteroid clusters and mine those asteroids for valuable ores like you're seeing now. You then collect the unrefined ore and use your refinery to, as you guessed, to refine it into saleable units. Now, I've spent f quite a few hours mining and I personally didn't find anything more valuable than silver. And even then I only found enough to refine one unit or one ton worth. Um, this combined with the fact that mining can take a fair bit of time means that at the moment it's not really a viable world way to make a lot of money. At least not compared to combat or trading missions. But it was just introduced so no doubt it will undergo, undergo many changes. But I think the core of the mining mechanic works really well, and to make mining more profitable, I think they just need to tweak some of the values. For example, most of the ore chunks that I blasted off asteroids contained like 5 to 10% of one ton of minerals. Now, a lot of the time, I would only the asteroids would only give me like eight chunks, meaning I would fall short of a complete unit and end up having to look for more and hope there was a similar ore asteroid in the area. I think if they just increased this amount to like 25 to 30 percent, that would help a great deal towards making mining worthwhile, as you would almost be guaranteed that each asteroid that you're, you can mine would give you like one to two tons of ore, meaning mining as a whole would be less tedious and more consistent, as you wouldn't end up having like 87 percent of a ton of ore in your cargo and not being able to find any more, which happened to me several times. So I think a change like that would be a good idea. But that's the two new big mechanics out of the way. So let's talk about some of the little additions. There are two new ships, the Imperial Clipper and the Federal Dropship, um, which takes us to about a dozen flyable ships, I believe. And while I haven't been able to test out either of them, as they are really expensive and will take me a fairly long time to earn, I am looking forward to trying them out. You can also now finally own more than one ship, which means we don't have to keep swapping ships in and out if we want to do different things, because beforehand, trying to use a ship in a role it wasn't made for didn't work so well. You either had to focus on one thing or another. You couldn't really do both efficiently. But now you can own a bunch of different ships to perform a variety of roles, which makes it a lot more enjoyable in my opinion. The game also has had numerous graphical and audio improvements, even though I did think it was already pretty excellent in both regards. The galaxy and planets are becoming more detailed as we approach release, which now means makes it more interesting as they look more like you'd expect them to look depending on their location their atmosphere uh, their land mass things of that nature rather than just being like a big green ball which i saw a lot in the past they have also added more audio effects and music to the game um, and while i'm not completely sold on the music yet the audio effect quality, as always for Elite Dangerous, is just outstanding. I think it might be the best I've ever heard in a game. They also added a ton of tweaks and bug fixes, but it would take me ages to go over them, as there are several hundreds. So I will just leave a link in the description for anyone interested in looking over all the changes. However, there are a few problems with the Beta 3. First is that I have suffered from a fair amount of disconnects while playing in open play, which I'm guessing is from some server issues, as playing solo fixed this problem. So if you're also suffering from it, then that is a solution. The next problem is a bit annoying, but it's also kind of funny. When you would interdict someone and drop out of Super Cruise, you could end up ramming into the back of their ship at high speed. And if they were piloting a larger ship than yours, it's likely you will end up exploding. So if you're going to be doing some interdictions, make sure to have your shield set at full strength, or things might not end up going as well as you'd hoped. Trust me, I've had it happen. 
But that pretty much wraps up all the new things that I wish to talk about in the Beta 3. So the full game is scheduled to release by the end of the year. So like in the next few months I would expect. But if you want to get access now, you can go to their website and buy the Elite Dangerous Beta for $75. Or you can pre-order the game by buying the Elite Dangerous Mercenary Edition for $50. So basically, 15 extra dollars for beta access, and the pre-order itself is a $10 discount from the release price. Um, I think both of these are really fair prices, and after playing a fair amount of Elite Dangerous through all of the beta stages, I can recommend that if you want to get into Elite Dangerous, but don't want to wait, uh, both of these are good options, and I myself have had a ton of fun so far, and I'm really looking forward to the full release. So, thanks to everyone for watching this video, and as always, if you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to the channel, I would appreciate it, but regardless, to everyone, thanks for watching, and I hope you all have a good day.